So today I wanted to talk about a few old Yu-Gi-Oh rule changes that have happened in years past that sort of changed Yu-Gi-Oh forever. And I'm not actually going to be talking about the master rule of like four stuff with the extra monster zones like links and pendulums. Those are the really well known ones. These are ones that you might not actually be aware of if you started playing the game just in the last maybe five or six years. But they were similarly impactful if not maybe even more so in some cases. So those three rule changes are the first turn player not getting to draw change, which happened around 2014, maybe someone can correct me if I'm wrong, the field spell change, um, which I'll get into, and of course the ignition effect priority change, which is definitely an old one, but it's also a really fun one to talk about. And of course at the end, after I've kind of gone through these and shared my thoughts, I want to hear what you guys think about these rule changes, if you feel that they ultimately did good for the game, I think that they did, and maybe what uh, else could be done to also further balance the game. So, all right. Um, the first one is the first turn player not getting to draw. So in olden days of Yu-Gi-Oh, back in my day, um, the player who went first actually drew a card. It's not like that today. So drawing a card at this time when you went first was a good thing. It meant going first was almost always the best thing to do because you'd be one card ahead of your opponent in terms of card economy. That's to say, like, you know, if I go first and you're going second, then on my first turn, I'll have six cards. And on your first turn, you'll get six cards, but from that point onwards, at any point in the game, I'm always going to have, like, one more of my, like, sort of free cards that you wouldn't have. So going first kind of always puts you ahead in card advantage, and this mattered a lot in a game where, like, there were a lot more, like, kind of just one-for-one -one exchanges in Yu-Gi-Oh!, things like, say bottomless trap hole, things like maybe a, a smashing ground or fissure to get rid of a monster. Having extra resources meant, you know, that you'd be able to just make additional plays that your opponent couldn't always necessarily answer. It wasn't as a pronounced of a difference, I think, as going first and second is today, but it still did make a difference. And so in around 2014, Konami changed that where going first meant that you did not get to draw a card. And I think that this change was for the better because leading into the modern age of Yu-Gi-Oh that we're in now, going first is obviously a huge, huge boon. Um, even though you get one less card than your opponent technically, we know that decks nowadays combo and they combo hard. You oftentimes only need to see one starter card and you can just kind of like make an entire board. And seeing extenders lets you build that board even maybe through like hand trap interactions and things like that. The player going second still gets to draw on their first turn and I think that this is kind of a good balancing mechanism because it means that if a player does go second, they have a, you know, at least they get like a sixth card so it can help them play through a board perhaps. Um, going first and being like unimpeded by trap cards and things like that is so strong that I think that this overall balances out as a change. Um, I mean, it's not perfect now. I think that even with that rule change, going first still feels kind of OP in Yu-Gi-Oh. The only time that going second is really preferred is if you're playing a deck that's dedicated to doing so. So that could be a deck with a lot of hand traps where you're hoping to just see them, but also it could be a deck that plays like a lot of board breaker cards, uh, you know, Dark Ruler No More, Forbidden Droplets, maybe the more obnoxious ones being like Raw Sphere Mode, Lightning Storm, Super Poly, whatever. If you go second, your chances of seeing those cards is greater. There's a bit of a like mismatch there because like if you draw say Nibiru as your sixth card and you're going second or really any hand trap, it's kind of a letdown. But um, that's kind of where we stand on that. I think that Konami probably foresaw that the game was getting more like combo base and monster effect base and like first turn advantageous. That's probably why they made this change. I think that overall it's a good one. Okay, so the next one that I wanted to talk about is the field spell change. Now this one's like rather... I don't want to call it obscure, I mean, it, it certainly is relevant, but it probably doesn't get talked about as much as the first or the third one I'm going to go into. So, um, the field spell thing. Back in the day in Yu-Gi-Oh, actually, both players were not able to have a field spell at one time. Only one field spell could be in the field at a time, and if a new field spell was activated from either player, it would, you know, destroy the current one. So if I had, um, what's an example of a field spell? I don't know, if I had Necro Valley on the field, let's say, and then you activated um, a new field spell. It's so hard to think of like the old field spells because they just don't, don't really get played very much. But you activate your own Necro Valley, it would destroy my Necro Valley. Or you activate any field spell, and, and for that matter, it would destroy mine. And this actually was kind of an interesting dynamic because it meant that you could sort of have like your own field spells in your deck as a counterplay to your opponents. So if your opponent plays like a troublesome field spell, again, Necro Valley comes to mind because it's just one of the stronger ones of that era. 
you could use MST to destroy it, but also if you just had your own field spell, let's say Skyscraper, right? That's a hero one. You could play Skyscraper and it would get rid of Necro Valley, and this made it where, like, that's one more way to counter field spells. I think that um, within, like, kind of the lore of Yu-Gi-Oh!, this sort of made sense, I suppose. Like, you know, I play a field spell, it kind of transforms the whole field. You play a, your new field spell, and it, like, erases mine and transforms the whole field. So that was kind of cool, but it certainly could feel, I guess, a little bit unfair if you played a deck that was very field spell reliant and your opponent did too. It was kind of this back and forth where neither player gets to really establish a long-term advantage. And some would call that fun, some might call that like, oh, it's toxic, I can't you know, do the things I want to do. I'm not really sure where I stand on that, but anyways, they changed the field spell rule where now you're able to just have a field spell and your opponent can. Um, I think that this change is like all right it kind of is nice because both players can just do the things they want to do with their field spells now i have a different conversation to be had about like the nature of field spells these days in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, where they aren't really like exactly fields they don't really affect both players they're oftentimes just cars that let you know somebody draw or search or whatever when they're activated and they just have strictly beneficial effects for the user rather than affecting the field and so in that way yeah. but i'll talk about that in another video um, but I think this field spell change, oh, on the whole, was, like, probably fine. Um, it's just one that exists. Uh, I don't have as much to say about it, but I just wanted to mention it. And the last one is Ignition Effect Priority. So this is a really big one if you played old-school Yu-Gi-Oh. Basically, Ignition Effects could actually be activated during the summoning window of a monster hitting the field. So I guess to make a, like, practical example of this, if I normal summon Exiled Force, everybody knows about that, and you activate Trap Hole to get rid of my Exiled Force, so I won't be able to use it and like, destroy one of your monsters, that wouldn't really work. I could always just call priority, as it was sort of described at the time, and just activate my Exiled Force's effect anyway. And this was like just a really uh, weird thing. It basically let monsters kind of play around cars like Bottomless Trap Hole um, or anything like that when they were summoned, and it... Eh? I, I guess it's, it, this is a rule to, I, I think I'm glad that it changed. So, like, here's a really extreme example of the time. Judgment Dragon and Light Swords. So, you know, Judgment Dragon, you have four Light Swords in your grave, you can special summon it from your hand, you can pay a thousand life points and nuke the field. And, um, this was, like, a huge effect, because obviously there weren't really hand traps to stop it, and, like, you know, nuking the board was just a really big deal. So if I summon Judgment Dragon and you try to use Bottomless Trap Hole today, then that would just work and Judgment Dragon gets banished and that's kind of the end of the story. But at the time, you could actually use your Bottomless and I'd just be like, oh, I don't care, I'm calling priority and using its effect anyway. This was extremely unfair. This applied to you know, Judgment Dragon, Dark Arm Dragon was another monster that was like pretty prominent and could do stuff like this. And it just felt like kind of an, one of those like weird exploity things, um, almost like the opposite, I guess, of like missing the timing, if you want sort of an analogy to that. So, um, yeah, they changed that. It doesn't work that way anymore. Um, I think this is, like, obviously a change for the better. It makes the rules feel more, like, fair and clear about how ignition effects work. So, yeah, um, those are the three rules that I just wanted to go over, and I thought that they would be fun to talk about because, uh, I don't know. I just, it's, I'm always fascinated. I've been, like, more and more fascinated by, like, little minute rule changes in Yu-Gi-Oh! these days. I don't know why it is. I think I just... I like the idea of, like, you know, can, like, a small change affect the game for the better. And there's plenty of other ones that I haven't mentioned here, but these are just the three that I thought were kind of impactful, and I want to hear what you guys think about them, and maybe if you think that there should be other ones that should happen too. Um, yeah, so anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Drop a like if you did. Like I said, leave a comment. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I'm trying to build up APS+, make it bigger, be cool. All right, that's going to be it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Best turn.